You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get to use those personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic, we are starting part one of a three-part series. I like doing these little three-part, four-part, two-part series every now and then. Topic here, and tomorrow, and the day after, money increasing myths. Myths, things that you thought would help you make more money if you just did them, but they are actually not necessarily true. We're gonna get into what they are, why they are not necessarily true, and hopefully save you some time, save you some money, and make you some money, and buy you back some time all at the same time. We're gonna do all of that over the next three days of the show. Actually, we do that every day on the show, but we're gonna focus specifically on it here in this three-part series. So before we get into that, let me remind everybody, I send out this text message every morning that I call it a daily motivation. It is a message that is guaranteed to help you start your day being focused, sharp, and on point. Do you want to be that? Yes? Okay, here's what you do. Text me right now at the following number, 305-384-6894. And every morning when I send out the daily motivation text, you, as a member of my texting community, shall receive that message, and you can even respond to any one of those messages, because I do actually reply to those text messages. I do read those messages. I usually get a message every other day, somebody saying, is this really Dre texting? Yes, that is really Dre texting. I really do write those messages. And when I reply to you, yes, that really is me replying. That is, when you first join, a bot is gonna make sure you're you. It's gonna verify you, that's a bot. And then everything after that is me. So that is not my, I don't outsource that to anybody else to respond to those messages. That really is me you are texting with. Ask somebody, they will confirm this now. Second thing, work on your game university. That is the place where you go to work with me directly. If you would like to be coached by me, coach people specifically on building a foundational mindset, strategy so you have a game plan of what to do, a system so that you can execute your strategy consistently, strategy and systems are not the same thing, and accountability and execution so that you have something, some guardrails in place so that you don't slip up and if and when you do slip, somebody is catching that slippage and making sure you stay on point and stay at the top of your game. This is why every professional has coaches. You need to have one because you're a top level person. So go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. That's where you can take the next step and work with me directly inside of Work On Your Game University. Right, we, got plenty of, we got plenty of classes there and you're gonna get real results out of these classes, not just a bill and a whole bunch of information that you have no idea what to do with like you did at your regular university. Now. With all that said, let's get into the topic, which is money increasing myths. Today, again, in the next two episodes of this series, we will be deconstructing some ideas that people have, some of you being those people, about making more money that are simply not true. So what I'm gonna help you do here is you're gonna do some addition by subtraction over the next, today, tomorrow, and the next day, next three days, by simply unbelieving these things that you may have believed up until now. So I'm gonna make unbelieving into a verb, not a uh, adjective. I don't know if it is, but it is now. So let's get into it. Number one, topic again is money increasing myths. Number one, money increasing myth is to work longer hours. Do not do this. If you are running a business right now, or you're doing anything, you don't even have to be running a business. You're doing any type of professional work, meaning there is money being made on some level. Whether you're making a dollar, you're making a million dollars, and you want to make more money than you're making right now. Again, whether you're making a dollar or a million dollars, do not resort to working longer hours as a way of making more money. This is not, it can technically make you more money. I mean, if you're getting paid by the hour, you make $20 an hour, you're working four hours a day. If you work eight hours, then you'll make twice as much money, technically. But in business, you don't wanna do this because first of all, the reason why you don't wanna do this is because there's a limit on how, much, how many hours you can work. So if the only way you can increase your income in business is to work more hours, you're gonna run up against a hard limit, the hard limit is that you only have 24 hours in a day. So there's only so many hours you can work no matter how hard you work. This is the work harder and work longer logical fallacy slash inaccurate formula that is the most pernicious and most often accepted by the masses of people. Always remember that if you wanna do better than the masses, look around at what the masses are doing and do the opposite of them. If you just want one rule of thumb to separate yourself by the law of contrast, 
is to look around what the masses of people are doing and do the opposite of them. Now, when you see a minority of people doing something, you might want to look into what they're doing because they're doing different than the masses. So be careful that you're not doing the opposite of the minority. You're doing the opposite of the masses. All right. So make sure you don't get those two confused. Look at what the masses believe and believe the opposite. All right. You can resolve if you try to resolve any challenge by working harder. All right. It has limits because there is only so much hard work any human being can do. And there's only so much time in which you can do that hard work. So working hard to solve a challenge is what a person does when they're not thinking creatively or maybe it's been drummed into you that just working hard is the, the key to success. It is not the key to success. Most people do not think creatively, so they just go with what they have seen or heard or been taught by default, which is just work hard. Or you're not getting your results, you must, want, you must need to work hard and it must be your problem. If you know how much money you can make in an hour and you know you only have 24 hours in a day, well multiply your hourly rate by how many hours you are working and that's the maximum you can make. All right, there you go. There's, your, there's the maximum amount of money you would make. Is that how much you wanna make? Are you okay with that amount? Most people, the answer is no. Most people would be uh, woefully short of your financial target if you took your hourly rate and multiplied it by all the hours you could possibly work in a day. Uh, we're gonna factor in that you take some time for eating and sleeping. If you multiply it by whatever number of hours is left, your hourly rate, that's still not gonna help you hit your financial goal. So clearly, this is not the outcome. This is not what you need to do. This is not the result. I mean, it's not the solution, excuse me, that's gonna produce the result that you want. If it's not enough for you, then you have to do something different. And what you need to do here, instead of asking yourself, how can I work harder? You wanna ask yourself, how can I make my work produce a higher rate of return? How can I make my work produce higher ROI, or higher return on investment? Your investment is your time, attention, energy, and focus. But you don't want to just put more effort in or more time in just because you can't think of anything else. If you're in this situation, if I'm speaking to you right now and you can't think of anything else to do but to work longer hours and harder while you're working, then what you need to do is get with someone who has insight, not information, but insight. And this is what I do at Work On Your Game University things that I focus on, my superpowers, I talk about a lot of different things, but my superpowers, things that I do better than 99% of the population is insight and breaking things down to put them back together, which some people call that strategy. A lot of people throw that word strategy around, it can mean a lot of different things. So that's why I'm giving you a more detailed definition of it. But insight is about asking the right question. It's about looking at the information and asking yourself a key question that will lead you to using your information in a different way than the way you have been using it up to this point. That's what insight means. That's one of my superpowers. My other superpower is I look at your situation, once I understand what it is, and I break it down, and we put it back together in a way that you're gonna get a better result than you were getting before. All right, that's what I do at Work On Your Game University. So any of you who is thinking, hey, you know what, I just need to work harder because I'm not getting the outcome I want. I'm not making the money that I want to make. No, you do not need to work harder. What you need to work on is asking a better question. And if you're not going to be the one to come up with a better question, that's completely fine. Everyone, I want you to get out of this mindset of thinking you have to do everything on your own or it's like it doesn't count if you don't do it by yourself. No, it doesn't count if you do it by yourself because that's the slowest and hardest and least efficient way to do anything. Do not do things by yourself. Your host, the person you're listening to right now, I do not do everything by myself. I get insights from other people. I borrow other people's brains. Why? Because borrowing other people's brains is a much more efficient way for me to get things done than, to me to depend, for, than for me to depend on my own brain. I depend on my own brain for what I'm good at, but the things that I'm not amazing at, you know what I do? I don't even try to get good at them. I go find somebody who's already amazing at them and I just borrow their brains. Why would I put all the effort into trying to figure it out myself when somebody else has already figured it out? It's, much, it's a much more efficient way to do things, folks. So again, there is no badge of honor in doing everything by yourself. I know your parents probably taught you this, your teachers in school probably taught you this. Whatever you consume online may have, have you thinking this. It is not true. Again, look at what the masses believe and do the opposite of that. You got me? Point number two. Today's topic, once again, we're talking money increasing myths. Number two is to take on more responsibility. This is a myth. While taking on more responsibility is actually a good way to increase your level of power in life, understand this may not always be the best way to make more money because that's what we're talking about specifically here in this series is how do you make more money. Taking on responsibility does not necessarily mean more money. Usually the more responsibility you take on, it requires more of your time, more of your attention, and more of your energy. So you should be careful about which responsibilities you're taking on and you should also do a careful analysis of how taking on that responsibility will translate to you making more money or if it translates to you making more money, whether directly or indirectly. If you cannot articulate to yourself 
how taking on this increased responsibility is actually going to make you more money, then maybe you should second guess whether or not you should take on that responsibility because you need to draw a line. Okay, I take on this responsibility because it's going to require more of my time, more of my energy, more of my focus. Now I had to do these six things and now I got added to my list. How is doing any of that going to make you more money? If you cannot draw the line from this increased responsibility to an increase in revenue, then taking on more responsibility is not necessarily, or actually, not, let's take the word necessarily out of it, is not going to help you make more money. Because again, let's remember our topic here today. I'm not, a, I'm not against the concept of responsibility. Let's be clear. Now, if you want more power in life, and everybody in life wants to have power, because power is just having influence and having a say over what happens in your own life, everybody wants that. I'm not against responsibility. It's good to have more responsibility if you want to have more power. But understand, just because you take on more power does not necessarily mean you're going to make more money. So, for example, if you have one child right now and you're going to have two more kids, guess what? You got triple the responsibility. Now, you got a lot more responsibility. But does having those kids make you more money? No, <laughs> it's not going to make you more money. It's actually probably going to cost you more money. So understand, you got to understand when to use certain information and when not to use it. Okay, so don't take this as oh, Dre's against responsibility. No, Dre is for responsibility, but let's remember, let's keep the conversation in context. What we're talking about today in this series is making money. So, taking on more responsibility usually costs you more of your time, attention, and energy. Now, is that cost of time, attention, and energy going to result in an increase in revenue? If so, explain to yourself how. If you cannot clearly articulate it, if you cannot explain it to me, if you couldn't explain it to a 10 year old, how taking on this additional responsibility is making you more money, then it's not making you more money. Therefore, you need to second guess whether or not you should do this for the reason of making money. Now, if you're taking on more responsibility for a different reason, that's a different conversation. The conversation we're having here today is about you making more money in your business. Got it? Good, point number three. Today's topic, once again, is money increasing myths. Number three. Get another degree from school. Go back to school, get another degree, that'll help you make more money. I know, and I know of, many people who have executed on this idea. And in many cases, this actually does work. They have a certain, they have a degree, or maybe you only have a degree, or you do have a certain degree. You go back to school, you get some higher level degree than what you had before. And because you have that higher level degree, now you are qualified quote unquote qualified to make more money at your job or in your career, depending on where you're working. So if you go back to school and get that higher degree, now again, some magic button gets pushed and now you can make more money and get a higher position in certain jobs. You know, my, my mother is actually an example of this. My mom was in college when she had my sister and I, she was very young, she was in her early 20s, I think 20 exactly, when she had my sister who's a year older than me and she had me and she put her college career on hold because she had two young kids and you know, didn't really have the resources to uh, raise the kids and go to school. So she put that on hold. And then when I was in college, I think my second half of my college career, my mom finally finished her degree. So she put it on hold for a long time. Then she got her degree. And then after she got her regular degree, her four year degree, then she went and got a master's. I believe my mom has a master's degree. I don't, I'm, you can fact check me on this. I don't know how any of you would do it, but I think my mom has a master's degree. You can tell how much these things matter to me. But she has a master's degree, and because she got a master's degree, then she was qualified by, because she's a, my mom's in education. Because she got the master's degree, she was then qualified, and I'm using air quotes here, qualified, with, she was qualified to go get like a higher job or a higher salary and be qualified to be like a, um, because she works in the school system, she was then qualified to be a uh, like an assistant principal or a principal at a school just because she has a master's degree. Now, as a, a sidebar, it's actually not a sidebar, it's kind of part of this main point. Why the hell does getting a master's degree at a college make you qualified to be a principal at a school whereas not having a master's, you're not qualified to be a principal, what the hell is the difference? What does it matter? And somebody explain that to me. Somebody make that make sense. Time's up. You can't make it make sense because it doesn't make sense. This is all part of the is all part of the system. So the school system magically awards you for doing more school by giving you a little bit more money and a, a higher pay bump. And they, I'm not even going to trash the school system today any more than I already have in the past. But I will at some point in the future. Just not today. But when you get this, when you get a higher degree at school, you are now qualified magically for a higher certain job. You can start out at a higher level, and that degree basically raises the ceiling on what you could possibly earn in certain positions in many bureaucratic organizations. And when I say bureaucratic organizations, what do I mean? 
government education corporate. All right, that's what government education corporate. Everybody got it? Government education corporate. Those are bureaucratic organizations. If you have a your level of education completed, basically raises or lowers the ceiling on how much money you could possibly make working in any of those uh, organizations. For example, I'll use myself as an example here. When I got my first job out of college, which was not playing basketball, my first job out of college was working at Foot Locker, and I got hired as an assistant manager in training, because I didn't know anything about Foot Locker, so I couldn't really be an assistant manager, because I didn't know anything about the business. I had to start, basically, I was basically doing the work of a regular employee, because I had to learn the business. But the reason I got hired as an assistant manager in training was, and I was getting paid like an assistant manager even when I was training, was because I had a college degree. Now, again, let me ask you all this question. This is just a logical question. Why does me having a college degree qualify me to be an assistant manager at Foot Locker, whereas if I didn't have the degree and I had applied with the same everything else, same person, same everything else, they would not have let me get started as an assistant manager just because I didn't have a college degree. What the hell does a college degree have to do with my ability to sell some damn sneakers off the shelf? Nothing. It has no, nothing to do with it whatsoever. So it is, it's kind of ridiculous the way this is set up, and, and some of you are laughing at this because, actually, some of you are laughing and some of you ain't laughing. <laughs> so, <laughs> some of you are laughing at this because you know how ridiculous it is, and some of you are, are not laughing because I'm talking about something that you did. You went to school and you went and got a degree or a higher level degree and it allowed you to get a pay bump at your job, but you understand exactly what I'm saying here, do you not? Now, if I'm wrong, you let me know. But you know I'm not wrong. You know this is 100% right. This is how it works. Now again, what does it have to do with my ability to sell some sneakers off a shelf? Nothing. I had the same capacity to learn whether I had that degree or not. Let's say I had dropped out of school the last semester and didn't get the degree. So now I can't be an assistant manager or foot locker? Why? <laughs> what does it have to do with anything? Nothing. Then anyway, back to my point. Looking back, and looking at the way things are now still with regards to having a degree versus not having a degree and how that qualifies or disqualifies you for a certain amount of money in certain positions, I think all of that is ridiculous if you can't tell. Again, what is spending an extra two years at school or an extra month or getting a certain degree? What does that have to do with my ability to help any company generate revenue or serve their clients? It does not. The answer is absolutely nothing. But this is the racket of school and education in America. However, since this show is targeted towards the entrepreneur, this is my bigger point here, you understand that going to school has no bearing whatsoever on the money that you will generate in your business. So those of you who are working inside of bureaucracies, you're working for the government, you're working corporate, you're working in academia, if you want to make more money in your career, then getting some more schooling, getting another degree, and getting some more letters before or after your name, it actually can give you a bump in pay. They probably show you this. When you get the job, they probably show you a chart that says, look, if you got this degree, you can make this much money. You got this degree, you make this much. You go get this, you can make this. They probably show it to you right there in the job interview, right? Most, I don't know. I, I, I did not go that deep in any of those places, but I would bet that you do because I hear people talking about this stuff and they say, well, if I go get my... X, XYZ degree, then I can make more money. Or I went, to, well, I went back to school and I got this degree so I can make more money. Or I hear people saying, I'm about to go back to school so I can make this much money doing this thing and working in this organization. So I'm assuming that this is something that is introduced to you all when you're working in these, these bureaucracies at a very early point in your process. Again, I don't know and I ain't trying to know. But I think this is what happens. I hear so many people talk about it at all different levels. So if you're working in a bureaucracy, you should do this. If you're an entrepreneur, this has no bearing whatsoever on how much money you make. And I want you to understand that this show is targeted towards an entrepreneur. If you're not an entrepreneur, that's okay. You can still listen to the show. But I'm talking to the entrepreneurs here. Your degree ain't got a damn thing to do with how much money you make. I can't remember the last time anybody asked me, and I work with a lot of people. I talk to a lot of people every single day, and people pay money to work on your game incorporated. Nobody ever asked me, hey, Dre, before I buy this book, before I sign up for this course, before I hire you as a coach, before we book you to come speak at our conference, before we invite you to come be on our podcast, what college did you go to? What degree did you get? Nobody ever asked me that. Uh, it doesn't happen. All right, that says nobody. All right, nobody ever says that to me. But if you're working in a bureaucracy, academia, corporate, government, then yes, go back to school and get your degree. If you plan on being an entrepreneur at any point in your life, just as a heads up, whether you go back to school or not, nobody gives a damn about your degrees on this side of the wall. You all got that? Good. Let's recap today's class. This is part one of three, money increasing myths. These are things that people think are going to help you make more money as an entrepreneur. They are absolutely not true. Number one, work longer hours. This is the work harder and longer 
logical fallacy an inaccurate formula that you were taught by your parents you've been taught your entire life that if you just work harder that must be the solution to your problem it is usually not the solution to your problem it actually usually creates more problems than it solves so do not go work harder number two take on more responsibility while I am a fan of responsibility because more responsibility equals more power, understand that just because you took on responsibility and have more power does not necessarily mean you're going to make more money. You need to figure out logically how does taking on this responsibility help me make money? If you cannot answer the question, then taking on that responsibility probably is not going to help you make money. And number three, get another degree from school. This is a good formula if you are working in a bureaucracy like government, corporate, or academia where they, I believe there's some kind of chart or something you can look up very easily because I hear so often people talking about this that if you have this degree, you can make this much, but if you only got this degree, you can only make this much. In those spaces, yes. In the entrepreneurial world, absolutely not. And we are talking to entrepreneurs here. So tomorrow we're going to go into part two of this series. Text me. Let me know the best insight you got from today's class. Let me know if I said something that made you laugh. Let me know if I said something that made you frown. Either way, text me and let me know you want that daily motivation. Also, my number is 305-384-6894 and workonyourgameuniversity.com. You want to work with me directly. You want to be coached by me. You ready to take your game to the next level through mindset, strategy, systems, and execution. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre all day.